Good day, everyone. I am Assistant Professor Rushad Mistry from the Mechanical Engineering Department at Manchin Institute of Technology, Sholapur. And for this session, I'll be discussing about actuators for industrial robots. Now, in the previous videos, we've talked about basic robot configurations, the uh, market scenario of industrial robots, and sensors, um, sensors, sensor characteristics of the ones which are typically used in industrial robots. So in this session, we'll be discussing actuators for industrial robots and, um, and also some basic components of industrial robots. So the learning outcomes of this session will be that the student will be able to list components of industrial robots and explain basic features of the actuators used in industrial robots, which are basically hydraulic, pneumatic, and electric act. Um, something I'd like to share with you, in fact, even before I begin discussing industrial, uh, the actuators for industrial robots is, uh, a lot of textbooks continue to discuss and compare hydraulic, pneumatic, and electric drives for robots, basically actuators. And th there's nothing wrong about it. A lot of in, uh, textbooks, uh, any textbook which deals with actuators will compare these three. Uh, a fourth one obviously could be some mechanical actuators or mechanical drives. But these three are invariably compared. Now, if you actually do a survey of the top 15 manufacturers of industrial robots, which I believe would definitely account for more than 99% of the industrial robot market, most cases, the drives are AC servo motors. Okay, so I don't have an exact number, but I'm pretty sure it, it will be in the 80s or the 90s by far. Uh, a handful of applications we did come across DC servers, and these were some SCARA ro uh, robots, some Delta robots, and some robots typically in the low uh, payload section, under 10 kg payload, we did come across some DC servos. Um, a couple of examples of stepper motors were also observed. Uh, uh, those models typically were meant for medical tasks. Uh, most of them were Cartesian and a couple of um, um, uh, uh, jointed arm configurations. So it's uh, we, we didn't come across other other types of drives and definitely not pneumatic drives uh, in any of the survey that we did. It's possible that um, third party, um, uh, you can say, retrofit companies may have come up with their own design, uh, which may use some sort of a pneumatic arrangement. But if it's used, it's probably for some very basic pick and place task. Okay. Now, coming back to our core uh, discussion, which is about robot actuators. So an actuator basically converts input energy typically into mechanical. The final uh, aspect we are looking at is the out output being mechanical. So these are often called as the muscles of the manipulator. Now, these may be revolute or prismatic, depending upon the configuration of the robot. And the most popular choices are electric, pneumatic, hydraulic, shape memory alloys, and so on. These three, obviously, by far, would be most popular. And amongst this, electric drives are by far the most popular. Sometimes you may have what is called as a direct or indirect configuration if the motor is driving the joint through a linkage or through a transmission. So this is another uh, nomenclature that we have added over here. Sometimes if, if the torque is sufficient, the motor may have a direct drive. Now there are pros and cons to both, and textbooks on robots um, discuss about the advantages of using of direct drive and also of using gears for speed reduction. So that, that wo we won't be discussing as a part of this particular series, but it, it does come into picture once we start studying about robot control. Now, uh, coming back to robot actuators, uh, revolute driver actuator is a motor typically so when energy is supplied, the motor axis responds in rotary motion. Gears may be used to meet speed and torque requirements, but in many cases, they prefer a direct drive. Load attachment to the arm, attached to the arm, is typically then rotated about its axis. Now, hydraulic actuators, uh, very typically linear rotary actuators and rams, they provide force or torque needed to move the joints, and they are typically controlled by servo walls um, servo control walls. Now, a hydraulic pump okay, is used to provide high pressure to the system, and an electric motor or even an IC engine may drive the pump, and you need some sort of cooling system to get rid of the heat for it. So this is a basic, con you can say, composition of the hydraulic system. You need reservoirs to keep the fluid supply available to the system at all times. You need servo walls, which are very sensitive, and they control the amount and rate which of the fluid which enters the cylinder. Uh, and it's 
servo valve is typically driven by what is called as a hydraulic servo motor. Sensors are necessary to control the motion of the cylinders. These are typically pitch, position, velocity, and others. Then you need connecting hoses to transport the pressurized fluid. You need all the safety check valves, etc., etc. So it's quite a bit of a contraption over here. Now, uh, hydraulic drives do have advantages, and uh, let me tell you some of the very first industrial robots which were built. They featured hydraulic drives. And uh, if you look up any literature on industrial robots which date back to the 80s and 90s, the general argument which goes in favor of hydraulic drives is these were the most preferred drives when it came to heavy duty tasks, typically when the payload exceeded um, 100, 200 kgs. And um, especially if, if these were painting robots, because that time since DC motors were quite popular, uh, the possibility of spark due to brushes was a was an explosion hazard. So that's how the literature, in fact, portrays hydraulic drives. I am not sure how far that is consistent today, given the wide use of electric motors in a lot of applications which in the past would have featured hydraulic drives. But nevertheless, the ad advantages of hydraulic drives are these maintain high uh, and constant torque force over a wide range of speed. They definitely have a high starting torque very large force capacity, large power to weight ratios, um, good precision, uh, definitely not as compared to electric, but better than pneumatic because greater bulks modulus of the oil and can maintain large forces over longer periods. On the downside, they require external energy sources, a lot of accessories, um, oil obviously has maintenance issues because there are leaks etc etc and these precision walls can be quite expensive so these are the typical disadvantages of any hydraulic system uh, this includes industrial robots now um, like i said i would definitely want you to look up um, websites of the top manufacturers and see if you do come across uh, uh, any hydraulic drive or pneumatic drive for any one of their product lineups. So if, you, if you do come up something like this, I would be a, a very happy person. So far, my surveys have indicated otherwise. Now, come, go, uh, now to, uh, when it comes to pneumatic actuators, again, textbooks do tend to discuss this, but in, in my um, entire experience of trying to scout and look, uh, and look for industrial robots, uh, in industries in and around here in India, I have come across only one industrial robot, that too from a, um, what you can say, a, um, it, it, it's, it's, not a, it's, it's not a reputed or world-renowned robot manufacturer, but more like a, a, an automation services provider who had come up with their own design and configuration, which, which featured uh, pneumatic drives. And it was used for very simple, very basic pick and place tasks. Other than that, Typically, all the robots that I've come across used AC servo systems. So coming back to this, like hydraulic, these are very similar to uh, the hydraulic actuators, with the exception that the part is, in fact, air instead of it being oil. And these include pneumatic cylinders uh, for linear motion or pneumatic motors or rev uh, for uh, revolute motion. And these are typically used in simple manipulators where piston moves uninterrupted between drops. Like I said, the most likely application, if you do find, it is, is, is for a very simple pick and place task and very typically in the lower end of the payload spectrum. So what are the advantages then? Typically, the one advantage which stands out is the lower cost and um, ease of maintenance and also to a certain extent that a lot of uh, industrial setups have an existing pneumatic setup for a lot of other things, which you can then use um, for this particular purpose. So cost, I would say, by far is the most uh, important advantage of pneumatic drives. Um, it's one more thing, it's, it's simple to control, um, and it's, it's, it's quite okay when it comes to point-to-point -point motion. On the other hand, uh, con compressibility of air reduces pre precision. There are quite a bit of vibrations, especially when it's suddenly stopped. Um, and like uh, the hydraulic system as well, you need accessories, you need external sources, you need filters and all that stuff, so that definitely adds to, uh, adds to the cost and all to the extra components of the system. And continuous motion control is very difficult and very expensive. So this is where, in fact, electric drives have an advantage over both pneumatic and hydraulic systems. So by far, 
come, now coming to electric drives, all robots today, I, I, I can f definitely claim almost all robots today are driven by electric motors. DC servo motors were quite popular in the 80s, and if you look up any literature which dates back to 80s or 90s, um, um, you would definitely find DC servos. There are books available which discuss, uh, which have included service, and they would indicate DC servo motors. AC servo motors now have virtually replaced DC servo motors, especially, especially since the advent of variable frequency drives. Stepper motors, we have seen a couple of applications, typically for laboratory setups and tabletop applications which require high precision. But most uh, classic industrial robot, uh, industrial applications, we have seen mainly AC motors, AC servos, followed by some DC, DC servos. The advantages of electric drives are, these are simple. They do not require extra energy. They are extremely efficient and precise control is possible. And cost of control is in fact quite low. And with the advent of high torque motors, in fact, they have started replacing hydraulics in many applications. The disadvantages, in fact, as given um, in textbooks, I would like to quote, uh, because a lot of manufacturers, in fact, don't give disadvantages as such, so I have to refer to textbooks for these, is uh, the liability for damage when it comes to heavy loading. Um, some motors which are at the cheaper end of the spectrum have poor specific outputs, and you may require gear reduction for many applications. Uh, when it comes to reading material, I would definitely recommend, um, uh, um, in fact, a handbook of robotics, this is one. These two textbooks are definitely one of the, uh, which you can refer. And above all, again, the plenty of internet resources, um, especially the manufacturers themselves, which can shed light on, on this topic, which is more pertinent and more relevant for the day. With this, I end this particular session. Thank you.